This is the first of two videos about the Tamron 35 to 150, which I'm shooting on right now. And my goal is to shoot as much of this video with this lens as I possibly can, because that's a good example in itself of how it looks and functions and everything like that. Now, despite the tile of, lovely, Despite the title of this video, this lens is superb, fantastic. I absolutely love it. I've got a whole video coming talking about the good examples, like a regular lens video that I do. But today I wanna to cover this lens in a little bit of a different way. Let me explain. Since the beginning of time, oh, that's a bit of an exaggeration, isn't it? But it feels like that. Everyone always asks, what is the best lens for everything? Everyone seems to want one lens to satisfy all purposes. So I normally respond to that by define everything. And the response is normally something along the lines of, I need it to be good for vlogging, for portraits, for landscapes, good zoom on there, f2.8 or better. And up until recently, you and I both know that that really hasn't existed. Don't know why I'm walking that way. I've got to get back in the truck and drive that way. Now, there were options out there that kind of almost satisfied all these things, but they'd probably be a variable aperture and it'd go to like f5.6, or they wouldn't be wide enough, or they wouldn't zoom in far enough, or the image quality was just total trash. But now we're a bit closer than ever before with the 35 to 150 from Tamron, which we're still shooting on if you hadn't figured out by now. With the exception of two things, which are always very heavily requested in this one lens that everybody wants. And that is vlogging and landscape photos. Now on paper, 35, which is the widest that this goes to, isn't really good for either of those. But can we make either of those work? Can we actually vlog and take landscape photos with the 35 to 150? I'm here today to show you that we potentially can. So let's start off with vlogging. And the easiest way to show you how we vlog with this is to vlog with it. So this next whole bit will be vlogging with this lens. And yes, if you're wondering what's going on here, I do have the wireless go attached to my vlogging setup. I'm actually BTSing this whole video. If you head over to the vlog channel, you can watch the behind the scenes on how I shoot a lot of stuff and do thumbnails and it's it's really not that interesting. But if you make YouTube videos, you might be interested. Now vlogging traditionally is just someone going about their day and uh, documenting it. Weirdly talking to the camera in the middle of the woods or wherever you are. And it's normally done with a 24 or a 16, something wider, not a 35, but why not? At 35, I'm a lot more zoomed in with the camera here. So you can't really see what's going on around me as much. And that's part of the problem. With vlogging, a lot of the reason it's so successful is it's relatable. People can see that it's just a normal person going about their normal boring day wherever they are. And you can't see as much as that when I'm at 35. So you don't really know where I am. So I'm not as relatable. Also with the, uh wider lens, you can make spaces look bigger than they really are. So if you're in a small studio or a bedroom, which most people are for shooting vlog stuff, at 16, things can look pretty wide. I can make this woods look a lot wider than it really is. Also, another thing people don't really think about is most of the time you aren't using a wireless mic like this. You have a mic on top. So the closer you can get to the lens or the camera means that you can get better sound for your vlog. There's nowhere to go. So, I mean, technically speaking, you could vlog at 35. It's a vibe, it's a look, it's super close up. You're, you're very intimate with me. Um, this is not what we're used to seeing. So if you are thinking about picking up this lens for vlogging, even just for a little bit, know that 35 isn't a focal length people are used to seeing when it comes to vlogging. It works, just not what we're used to seeing. I'd say uh, an old option or a better option is to do something like this. Have a wireless system or shout really loudly, I guess, if you don't have one of these. Set it up on a tripod and you can get much the same effect. It's less shaky. You can see everything. You can make it as wide as you want. Put the tripod back further. Is this a form of vlogging? Kind of. It works. Also, know that, uh, I don't know why I just decided to zoom in there. No, you know what? Let's zoom in and uh, take a look at the compression. Come on, it's not focusing. There we go. This is not a light lens, nor is it small. So if you're trying to be conspicuous and vlogging, you're not gonna be. And if you don't have muscles, which I do not, you are probably gonna need to get them. And then something else that on paper doesn't really look like it would be good for this lens is landscape photos. You don't think of a 35 mil lens and think, oh, that would be good for taking nice, big, wide 
landscape photos. But I think this is something that more applies for when you very first start out. I know I was guilty of this, and that's when you want to go and take landscape photos that you just default to using a 16mm or the widest lens that you possibly have. However, that's not always the case. You don't need to use the widest lens. A quick search on the internet for best lens for landscapes will show you pretty quickly that there's a ton of different options out there for what people use, and it's mostly personal preference and subjective. There isn't a specific lens that you need to use for landscapes, it's all dependent on what you want to achieve. But over time you'll realize that other lenses make great landscape lenses as well, including a 35, but sometimes a 7200 as well, or the 150 aspect of the 35 to 150. Because with a telephoto lens, you can do some pretty crazy things with compression and making the background look closer than it really is, bigger than it really is in comparison to your subject who is in the foreground. And we're gonna try and do a demonstration of that with something that's to the camera left right now, and we're gonna jump to that shot right now. This bridge right here. Let's uh, let's get the aperture a bit higher so we can actually see what's going on here. Oh, ND filter, what are you doing to me? Let's bump the ISO. Sure, let's go right to 12. Second base ISO, there we go. You can see a little bit more of that bridge in the background now. So if I was to just stand kind of like this, it looks pretty far back because we're at 35 but let's change to 150 to try and get a similar look to what we have right now and see how the background changes it doesn't work exactly how I wanted it to but you can kind of get the idea so what we did here is I pushed the camera back on the tripod like 30 feet zoomed right into 150 and now the bridge looks a lot closer to me in the background than it did in the previous shot, which was at 35. So you can see how by using a telephoto lens, you can play around with perspectives and do some pretty interesting things with landscapes. Didn't work exactly how I wanted it to, but you kind of get the idea. So just because the lens doesn't fit the bill on paper, doesn't mean it might not work. It might work just fine. You just gotta think a little bit differently to how everyone is using it right now. So the Tamron 35 to 150 could be used for vlogging and landscape photos as well. Little, uh, little side note here, the PGY Tech Mantis Pod supports the 35 to 150 just fine. So if you were looking to vlog in, it's probably a pretty, uh, pretty decent option for you. And yes, that is a potty. I have a two-year-old who likes to pee when we're out and about. See you later.